Here's a list of 40 games coming to PC in 2024. I'll start with the games that have got specific release dates. Hearthstone releases on January the 11th into Early Access. It's described as a story-driven espionage thriller and it features fast-paced gunplay with a really cool pixelated kind of look. It also looks kind of modern and fresh at the same time. The game isn't a roguelite, it's a proper single-player shooter with levels that you progress through and an ending. But it's going to release the first chapter, which the developers say will take about two hours to complete, and the other two chapters will release throughout the year. Toy Trains releases on the 16th of January, and it's developed by a new studio founded by the Soup Hot developers. The new game is something completely different. It's a puzzle game where you build a train, sit on different boards with objectives. You have a certain amount of parts to build the set, and there are multiple ways to complete each level. It's not something that I would have been interested in, but I do like the look of it, and I'm a big fan of VR puzzle games, so I'm definitely going to check it out. Hunt Together is set to release on the 18th of January on Quest, with the PC version coming shortly after. This is a PvP horror game with a 1v1 mode, where you're either the hunter with an assortment of tools, or the ghost, and you have to try it and kill each other. They've also got a 1 vs 3 hide and seek mode. This could be a lot of fun in VR with some friends, and because you only need two people to play online, it should be pretty easy to find someone to play with. Bulletstorm VR releases on PC on the 18th of January, and is probably my most anticipated VR game of 2024 so far. It's a port of the non-VR version, and it'll even have some exclusive levels only available in VR. This is a fun, fast-paced shooter with some great looking levels that plays nicely with scale. The protagonist likes to say a lot of naughty words, and you have a leash that you can use to whip enemies around for some stylish kills. Mixture, a game that already released on the Quest, has a release date for the 8th of February on PSVR 2. There's still no release date for PC, but there is a Steam page, so I imagine the PC release will be shortly after. This is a Moss-like, so that you control a character with motion controls as a gamepad, but you also reach into the world with your hands and mix potions. I really like the art style of this, and I love the Mosk VR games, so I'm excited for this one. Madison VR is due for release on PC on the 20th of February. This is a port of the non-VR horror game, where you have to take Polaroid images to connect to the real world with the beyond. This is a great mechanic that I think will work really well with motion controls. The game's got very positive reviews on Steam for the non-VR version, so so if you love horror games, this is going to be a must-play. Bootstrap Island is releasing into Early Access on the 22nd of February. This is an intense roguelike game with an emphasis on realism and short but intense sessions. I played the demo and visually the game is fantastic, and the gameplay mechanics are very well polished. It doesn't really have a tutorial, you just have to try and figure things out for yourself, but everything works as you'd expect. So you light a fire by laying sticks on the ground, finding some ember, and then banging two rocks together to create sparks. You can open a coconut by smashing it against a rock, and the full release is planned for 2025, and it'll be interesting to see how it grows throughout the next year. The Pirate Queen of Forgotten Legend is due for release in February. It's an award-winning VR adventure voiced by Lucy Liu. Set in the 17th century, based on a true story, it features some puzzles and what sounds like some stealth sections, but it's still a bit unknown really if this is going to be a full-length game or more of a story-driven experience. I don't mind either way, as long as it's priced right. Paint the Town Red is another port of a non-VR game released on the 14th of March. It's a chaotic, melee-focused game set in different locations and time periods. It uses voxel-based enemies that can be maimed in many different ways. It has co-op and overwhelmingly positive reviews on Steam. The VR version is releasing as DLC, so you're going to need to own the base game. There's no news on how much the DLC will cost, but it might be worth adding the base game to your wishlist and grabbing it on a sale. Vampire the Masquerade Justice recently got a PC version announced, with an early 2024 release window. The game is already released on the PSVR 2 and the Quest, and it's got a 4.3 out of 5 stars on the Quest app. It looks like a really solid stealth VR game, and you play as a vampire and have different abilities. I love the art style, and a lot of people have compared it to Dishonored. This is another game that's very high up on my list to play in 2024. Underdogs is an upcoming VR mech game with a Q1 2024 release window. You're strapped in a frame, and as you move your hands in real life, you control the arms of the mech. It looks like this is mostly focused on melee, with you fighting in an arena using lots of different weapons like chainsaws and wrecking balls. I love the art style, but I'm just not sure what the overall gameplay loop will be. Arkan Age is due for release Q1 2024. It's promising a long 20 hour plus single player campaign, some lush environments on an alien world, both melee and ranged combat, and it looks very promising with customizable weapons, you can upgrade and craft, it has climbing, boss fights, and it looks like a proper full-length VR game. 
Titanic A Space Between is another Q1 2024 release window and it's an interesting concept. You're on the Titanic as it's sinking and you have to escape while being stalked and attacked by monsters. This could be a great and terrifying combination and something pretty unique. The Burst is a story driven fast paced shooter with lots of parkour movement and climbing. I played the demo of this and I really enjoyed it. It looks nice in the headset, it plays well and it's got some really nice pacing with a mixture of traversing the environment with pockets of combat. It's also got sections where you ride a bike to get to the next location. It's one of the better VR games that we've got coming up and I believe the developers said that it will be about 6 hours to finish and it's set for release in Q2 2024. Another game with a focus on parkour and combat is Stride Fates. This is already released on the Quest and it's due for release on PC early 2024. I played the pre-release of this game and I really enjoyed it but I'm personally waiting for the Steam version before I play the full game. It's also still getting lots of updates so it's only going to improve with time. It looks great in the headset and I really like the movement system in this game. Gunman Contracts was originally an excellent set of mods for Half-Life Alex. It featured human enemies and a very fast time to kill. It made you feel like John Wick clearing rooms and buildings with a fast reaction time required. The modder is now turning it into a full game using Unity and the progress has been fantastic over the past year or so. This is set for release in early 2024 into early access with more levels and weapons being added gradually over time. I'm really looking forward to seeing how the full game turns out because Alex mods were a lot of fun. Behemoth is the next big game from developers of Saints and Sinners. We still haven't actually seen any gameplay footage of this, just a nice cinematic trailer but I do love the concept. They're taking the same brutal physics driven melee from Walking Dead and they're putting it into a fantasy environment with huge bosses to fight. It's basically Shadow of the Colossus in VR. It was due for release last year but it got delayed with a late 2024 release date. This next batch of games all have a 2024 release date. Affected the Asylum is a sequel to Affected the Manor and the new game will be more than a short haunted house experience with up to 4 player co-op. It's going to have multiple game modes as well as a story driven campaign but there's no real details on what the game modes are going to be or how long the story mode will last for but the co-op side of things makes it interesting for me personally. I made a video a few months back about a game called Paradox of Hope. It was removed from Steam due to a DMCA from an unknown publisher but the solo developer has been hard at work taking everything he's learnt from the first game and making a new game that will be even better. It's another stalker style game in VR but Paradox of Hope was extremely well made and had a great gameplay loop. Convergence takes all of that and it adds a dog as a companion. I'll cover this game in more detail in the future but Convergence is one to watch. Wanderer The Fragments of Fate is a remaster of the original game that launched a couple of years ago. It looks like they've really improved on the original which was a time travelling puzzle game. It's got better visuals, better interactions, a full body avatar and hopefully some slightly better pacing. I never finished the original so we'll be happy to replay this new version when it's released. Outer Hand released this year on Quest but it's due for release on Steam in 2024. It's a VR platformer that uses the Gorilla Tag movement so you grab the world with your hands and then you throw yourself around. I love the art style and it's got a good single player campaign with some boss fights. Final Fury is a VR fighting game by the Synth Riders developers. It looks like they're combining the Synth Riders type of movement but using it in a fighting game context. I'm still not sure on this one personally, I think it'll be fun to play but I'm not a massive fan of the way it looks and I think it would benefit from them trying to distance itself away from the rhythm game UI so it looks more like a fighting game than a rhythm game with a fighting backdrop. Brazen Blaze is a 3 3 3 brawler. It looks like it's going for the Smash Brothers of VR type of gameplay loop and you have some shooty shooty but it's mostly focused on bashy bashy. Set on largish areas with what looks like some good traversal mechanics, this could be interesting if you've been craving for a multiplayer smash em up in VR. Discronia Cronus Alternative Dual Edition is an absolute mouthful. This is already available on the Quest with excellent reviews. This weeb's delight has a strong focus on story with the main gameplay revolving around you investigating crimes and trying to solve them. It's not really my thing personally but it's definitely got an audience and it'll be available on Steam for both VR and for non-VR players. Grim is a VR multiplayer survival game launched into early access. You're on a planet trying to survive with the main enemy being the elements as you have to gather resources, craft and build to survive. No matter is due for release for non-VR in Q1 2024 but it's also going to be getting VR support later on in the year. Describing itself as a survival psychological horror, visually the game looks great with realistic graphics that will warp and twist reality as, as you progress through the game. 
I really love games like this. One of my favourite horror games was Layers of Fear VR, and if they can really play around with the environments in some interesting ways, without relying heavily on jump scares, I might actually be able to make it through this one. Sushi Ben released on Quest, and it's coming to Steam. I always thought this was another cooking game, but it's actually much more of an adventure game about trying to save your local sushi bar. It features lots of mini games like fishing, archery, table tennis, as well as some other stuff like catching bugs with a net. It's all wrapped up in a manga style with very positive reviews, and it looks like a breath of fresh air for someone looking for something more like hearted rather than just killing stuff all the time. Dungeons of Eternity is a roguelike dungeon crawler with three player co op. I played some of this on the Quest and I really enjoyed it, but I would prefer to play it on the PC, so I'm waiting for the Steam release. It's got a really good gameplay loop with different types of dungeons, multiple enemy types and boss fights. Lots of new content is planned throughout the next year, so keep an eye out for more details on when the Steam release is due. Into the Radius 2 is a sequel to the first game, which has been compared heavily to Stalker. You're in an apocalyptic type world with anomalies that you have to avoid or fight. It has a heavy focus on looting and crafting supplies. This is a pretty hardcore shooter and it's very popular. The new game introduces co-op and looks like it will be more of the same with some better visuals and more weapons than enemy types to kill. This will be launching into early access like the first game. Zero Calibre 2 is another sequel. The first game was an OK VR shooter with a single player and co-op story campaign and it later got PvP but seems to be struggling to build up a player base. If they can take what they've learned from the first game and improve on it in pretty much every way, then it could be a really fun VR shooter to play with friends. Mannequin is an asymmetric multiplayer game for up to 5 players. You either play as a human or an alien. The aliens can pose as humans that are frozen in time. You have to stand perfectly still to remain undetected when other players are around you. You defeat the human players by simply touching them. The agents are the human players that have a range of gadgets to try and detect the aliens. They've been doing a bunch of closed beta tests for this one, so you go to their website and sign up if you want to play it early. Thrasher is a new game from the developers of Thumper. This psychedelic audio and visual experience looks like it will have more VR functionality compared to Thumper, with you using your motion controls to control elements in the game. Thumper was a pretty interesting game. It was very visceral, with a striking art style. This new game looks to continue that trend, which is a good thing. Contractor Showdown is a Battle Royale version of the game coming as its own release. I love Contractors, it's my favourite PvP shooter and the developers have already shown off some footage of the new game on Reddit. It looks great and they're really doing a good job of making the PC version look like a PC VR title rather than a quest port. This is my personal most anticipated multiplayer game of 2024. This next batch of games all have a coming soon release date. Black Trail has been in development for a while and it did have a demo at one point. You play as both a Native American and a bounty hunter with a mixture of weapons based on the Old West era. I think the game has potential, but we're going to have to see how the final release turns out. Soul of Kairu is another moss-like with you controlling a frog in an isometric viewpoint, but you also do stuff with your hands like lighting up dark areas with a torch so you can see where you need to go. It's a Metroidvania inspired game, so you'll be getting new abilities that you use to unlock new areas. I love the way this game looks and I'm hoping that ends up being a good game. Kayaking VR Extreme Kayaking Adventure is another mouthful. This is another VR kayaking game with some really nice graphics, but it has extreme whitewater rapids. I did enjoy Kayak Mirage, but this gameplay does look more appealing to me, and hopefully they have enough courses with some challenges to complete to make it interesting. Genotype VR is a Metrovania style first person adventure game set in an arctic station. It's already available on the Quest with very good reviews. It's got good graphics for a Quest game with the developer recently announcing that it's coming to Steam. You have to use bionic weapons that are on your wrist to fight enemies and solve environmental puzzles. I've had my eye on this one for a while, but I'm personally going to wait for it to release on Steam before I finally play it. EA Sports WRC is a new rally game already available, but it's already been confirmed that VR support is coming after launch, so it should be within the next few months at the latest. Rally and racing fans alike have been really enjoying the game Flat, with many people saying it's the best rally game ever made. I'm personally a big racing game fan, so this will be a dream to play in VR. Escape Simulator is a non-VR escape the room puzzle game converted to VR. It's got excellent reviews, and the VR version has got a demo that you can try. I tried it out with some friends, and it's got up to 8 player co-op support, and I really enjoyed it. The VR controls do feel like a non-VR game converted to VR, rather than something built from the ground up with VR in mind, but they're perfectly functional and do the job fine. 
The only thing I would like to see is the ability to see the other player's movement. At the moment, the avatars move around like they're being played in the flat version, so you can't see the hand movements. It's also a very big game with loads of escape rooms. The demo alone has got three to complete, which took us about 30 minutes each. So the full game has got multiple hours worth of content with 25 rooms to escape, as well as over 3,000 community made rooms. That's 40 games, but I do actually have another nine that I do think have a good chance of coming out over the next year, but nothing concrete right now. Servios announced that they're working on an official Aliens game a couple of years ago, which is going to be set between the first and the second film, and it's got huge potential as a massive Aliens fan. It will have both VR and non-VR support, which should mean that it's got a good budget, and Servios have got a good track record when it comes to VR gameplay mechanics, even if The Walking Dead had a pretty dull gameplay loop. Even if it doesn't release over the next year, hopefully we get to see some gameplay. The Exorcist Legion Sin is a co-op horror game that sounds similar to Phasmophobia, but instead of identifying ghosts, you'll be exercising demons. But we still haven't seen any gameplay yet, and it was actually due for release in 2023, but got delayed, so a 2024 release is very likely. Lo-Fi is a game that was kickstarted years ago. It's made mostly by a single developer in his spare time, and it's been a while coming. I've had this one on my upcoming game list for a couple of years now, and it's a cyberpunk style world where you can fly around and walk through stunning areas but there's still very little known about the overall gameplay loop and what you'll actually be doing in it. Will it release over the next year? Who the hell knows? Riven, the sequel to Myst, is getting a remake. This was announced a few years ago, but we still don't have any footage or screenshots yet. It also hasn't been confirmed to be coming to VR, but all of Cyan's recent games have VR support, so I think it's highly likely. Not sure if this is going to release for 2024, but it's been in development for a while. Into the Darkness is another game that's been in development for a while. I played a demo of this back in 2019, and the developers have recently announced that they will be doing private beta tests. It's kind of a mix of Boneworks and Saints and Sinners when I tried it, but the game's come a long way since then, and I think it could be one of the better VR games coming in 2024. Still no solid release date, but the fact that they're ready for playtesters is a good sign that it won't be much longer. Stranger Things VR was due for release at the end of 2023, but it got delayed until 2024. The developers said that it will release on all major VR platforms, but now it's only releasing on the Quest. I'm not sure if this is a time thing, and it will come to other places like PSVR 2 and Steam later, but I guess we'll find out over time. Nine, A Splintered Mind has been in development for years, and we haven't actually heard anything on it for a while. It's a cyberpunk style VR detective game where you have to solve a series of murders. I'm not sure if this one's been abandoned to be honest, but hopefully it's not, as it looks interesting. The Bound VR is a new, upcoming VR adventure game with a dark theme. It will feature puzzle solving, exploration and shooting. Little more is known about this project, but the developer has teased on Twitter that more will be revealed soon. Max Mustard was announced in August at Gamescon. It's been developed by the same studio that made Rich's Plank, and this is a third person adventure platformer which is promising made for VR mechanics. It looks like it's taking heavy inspiration from Astrobot, with you both controlling Max, but also using your hands to use tools and to manipulate the environment. It's been in development for over three years, and it seems like a release over the next few months is likely. And that's all the games that I know of that are coming in 2024, that I personally think that look interesting. There will be some that I've missed, so put your recommendations in the comments, and as always, games often get announced and released within a few weeks or months, so there's definitely going to be a bunch of games coming that we don't even know exist yet. A very special thanks to my Patreon and YouTube members, and if you did like this video, please consider liking and subscribing.